Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Williams, and today I'm going to show you how to set up your controller to test your chassis when you are starting to build your robot for competition. Now you could set up your controller using what you see when you start your V5 VEX code project, um, but I'm going to ask you to get used to using the competition template. So in order to use the competition template, you will go to File, and then you will go to Open Examples. And this is a great place to see how you would code different sensors or a claw bot, or and you can see lots of different example projects. Great way to learn how to code. But we're gonna use the template, so you can filter using the templates, and we're gonna use the competition template. Now the reason we use this is that you are going to plug in your joystick to a drive tower at the tournament. And this means that the tournament manager will control your robot so you can only drive during the driver control period and your autonomous runs during the first 15 seconds of the autonomous period at the beginning of the match. So there are three start or event blocks that start your program and all three of these must remain in the competition template. You may not delete any of them. The when started is what will run prior to your match. You might want to set up some sensors or put some wheels in a certain position, um, but usually this one's not going to be used by most people, and so the when started is prior to the match. The when autonomous, this is your autonomous code that will run the first 15 seconds when the autonomous period it has been activated by the tournament manager. We will talk about this in our next video, and I can move these around, I just can't delete them. We're going to talk about this driver control period. This is when you use your joystick to drive around the field for a minute and 45 seconds. Now it comes with a forever loop. You can leave the forever loop on or you could delete it. Um, just in order to delete things, you just drag it back into the menu. But this is how it comes with the forever loop. We're actually not going to put any code into the driver control. We're just going to set it up in our motor and sensor setup area right here. You also see there's a little sticky note. You might want to label the name of this project, who created it, the date. This is just to help you keep track of any information you might want to share with your team. It's also important that you save the project with the name of what kind of program this is. So I'm going to go ahead and name it the chassis test because that's all we're using this code for. Um, but you might want to, oops, I already have that. I'm going to replace it. Um, you might want to name it, um, you know, if you're going to do your autonomous on the red side, it might be a red autonomous program or a blue side, blue autonomous program. Um, so you want to name it with the name of what it's going to run. You'll also see that there are eight different slots that can store programs on the brain. So you can store up to eight different programs in the brain and run them without having to download more code and you can run them during a match and easily switch between them. So you might have, and we'll probably rewrite over this slot one for chassis test, you might have a, a position for the red side and you might have a second position, starting position for the red side depending on what your alliance partner is going to do. We're going to talk more about this in the next video when we talk about autonomous programming. But for now, we're just going to pick the number one slot. Okay, now we're going to set up our motors. So I'm going to go to this motor and sensor icon right here. And I'm going to add a device. So the first device I'm going to add is my drivetrain. Now I'm setting up a two motor drivetrain. If you have four motors, you're going to set up a four motor drivetrain. So I'm going to click on the two motor drivetrain and it asks, what is my left motor? My left motor is plugged into the one port. And then my right motor is plugged into the 10 port. And I do not have a gyro sensor on here, so I'm going to click not, no gyro. And it asks a little bit about the width of your chassis. So I am using 4-inch wheels. I'll keep that one the same. And I'm actually going to change this millimeters, if I can here, to inches. And my um, track width, which you're not sure what that is, you can just look right here. It's from the middle of the wheel to the middle of the wheel in the front. Mine is actually 11.5. And then my wheel base, you can see right here, this is from the center of the wheel to the center of the wheel on the right side or the left side. Hopefully, they equal on both sides. I'm going to change this to inches, and mine is actually 6.5. And I'm using a 1 to 1 gear ratio. That means I don't have any, um, 
additional torque or speed that I'm trying to increase with gears, I'm just plugging my axle straight into the motor and I have a green cartridge. And I'm gonna click done and I have now set up my drivetrain. You'll also notice that there is some drivetrain code that has been added. We'll talk about that. That will be used for autonomous. Okay, now I'm gonna add two devices. Now, this is probably something you don't have already on your, because we're just testing the chassis, chassis, but you might have another motor added. So I'm gonna add a motor, because I already have my arm motor on there. And so um, I'm gonna select my port, and this was on number three. And I'm gonna actually change this to the name arm. Now, if you have more than one arm motor, you might put arm right or arm left or arm top or arm bottom to identify which motor you're talking about. Um, but I'm going to um, keep it in the direction that it is defaulted to. I could reverse this uh, or I could change this to, I'm sorry, I could change this to up and change this to down because that's what the arm is gonna do. Um, I'm gonna use this gear cartridge, but if I wanna reverse the motor, I could reverse it this way. Notice how the arrows change. It's just a simple toggle button. Okay, I'm gonna click done, and I'm actually gonna add one more motor. You probably aren't ready here, already here yet, but I'm just gonna add it for you. Oops, I'm gonna add a device. I'm gonna add one more motor, and this is for my claw. This one is plugged into port eight. I'm gonna change the name to claw, and I'm gonna keep them, um, oh, I wanna do open and closed. And um, if I wanna reverse the motor, I would just toggle that and then hit done. So once I test it, if I find out my motor's going the wrong way, I simply toggle that back. Okay, so this is my setup. I basically have a claw bot that I'm programming. Um, I have four motors, two on the drivetrain. So you're gonna set those up first. And then if you have any additional motors, you can set them up as well. Okay, and now I've got one more device I need to set up. I need to set up my controller. So I'm gonna add another device, I'm gonna add the controller, and when I click on these joystick buttons, if I click on it, you can see that this is a arcade control single joystick that will do your forward and backward and turning all on one joystick. If I click it again, you will use the right joystick. Same thing, arcade control with your right hand. However, I like and I think the best way to control your robot is a dual joystick. You have the left side for going forward and back and the right side for turning right and left. This is what I find um, is probably the most efficient and accurate for controlling a robot. I'm also gonna click on this L1 button. This is gonna be my arm going up and down. If I wanna change it to my claw, I just click it again. And then I click these R1 and R2 and I'm gonna have that be my arm. Okay, so that is my controller. I'm just gonna click done. And you will see now I have options over here for my motors, I can change arm to claw. So this will be used for autonomous. We don't need it now. I'm gonna go ahead and close out my devices window. And that's all you do. Now I'm gonna plug in my brain to my computer and this will turn green. And once you do that, you're gonna click download and you're gonna download it to your brain. And you will see it will automatically open on your screen when you download it and you can just run play or you can go into your programs file and go to slot one and run the program from slot one from your programs that are stored in your brain. Now, sometimes if this doesn't run, you may need to use the switch plate um, to run your driver control. But when I tried it, I didn't need to do that. It ran fine when I just turned it on. I was able to control my robot with my controller. But if you find that it's not working, you may wanna put a switch plate in um, and plug your joystick into the switch plate. It's really easy to use. All you gotta do is start in disable, put it in driver control, and then switch to enable. When you're plugged into that switch plate, it should then allow your joystick to start. All right, I hope this helps. Good luck.